to the Deputy Minister, I beg your pardon, of um, Social Development, Henrietta Bogobane Zulu, called for women who drink while pregnant to face criminal charges. She was speaking at an event to raise awareness of fetal alcohol spectrum disorders. It is on Saturday, International FASD Awareness Day. It's unclear to me from the reporting that I have seen whether the minister with the deputy minister was saying that all women who drink while pregnant should potentially face criminal charges or only those who deliver a child that is clearly suffering from fetal alcohol syndrome. But anyway, let's discuss this with Professor Charles Parry, who's director of the Mental Health, Alcohol, Substance Abuse and Tobacco Research Unit at the Medical Research Council. Charles, a very good afternoon. Good afternoon, John. Is, I presume the medical advice is don't drink at all during pregnancy, but is there a relatively clear dividing line between what it is probably safe to do in terms of drinking, even though not advisable, and beyond this, you're risking the life, the health of your baby? Well, clearly the amount, the amount you drink would make a difference. But generally, you know, I don't want to get into the specifics of it. You know, drink three a week, it's dangerous, one's okay. So we, would, we generally give the advice of not drinking at all during pregnancy. But clearly, you know, the amount you drink, you know, makes a difference. But uh, not a good thing to do. I mean, alcohol is incredibly, you know, tetragenic and affecting the, you know, the physical characteristics of the developing fetus. But, I mean, the, the medical advice would be don't drink while at all. Correctly. Correct. Correct. Okay. But is there an acceptance that, and I don't want to tie you to specifics, as you've indicated, but uh, a couple of drinks every every month just to to relax you when you're feeling particularly stressed about your pregnancy, that's unlikely to harm the baby, but still you probably should try to avoid it. I mean, I would I would agree with you there. I mean, if someone came to me and said, oh, they've had a couple of drinks and now they feel incredibly guilty, I would I would sort of follow the same view that you've had that it's it's probably fine. Don't 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 feel guilty about that, but it's just not advisable to do. Uh. We we have. I mean, one can understand the deputy minister's concern around fetal alcohol syndrome because we have the highest level in the world of FAS, partly to do with our iniquitous uh, DOP system history. Um, and, and so one can understand that one wants to speak in strong terms about it, but criminalizing women who drink or maybe even only criminalizing women who drink enough to deliver a baby that is obviously FAS doesn't seem to be a sensible way to go? No, I mean, I, I also was surprised when I saw that. I wouldn't support it at all. You know, I have, I, I have heard of a situation, in fact, I visited a treatment center, a facility in Norway where pregnant women who were abusing alcohol or drugs were uh, detained and given treatment until after the birth of their baby. But that was quite an extreme case. And I imagine that was a civil process, you know, where very similar to someone who's got a mental disorder and they seen as being a danger to somebody else, they can be committed. But, you know, there's not, as far as I know, there's no evidence that that kind of incarceration is an effective policy. And, and obviously I look a lot at the, at the research out there on what works with addressing, you know, addressing harmful drinking. And I think legal cases, we know they take money, they get delayed, and it takes a long time to get anywhere. And I think the money could be better spent on doing other things. I also think this reflects too strong a focus on the woman who drinks and rather than probably the upstream drivers of, of drinking. But if I were to focus on women who drink, certainly we've done research which involves case management of active case management of women who who are suspected of, of having an alcohol exposed pregnancy maybe they've had one before or they're just heavy drinkers who who, who who are very dependent on on drinking so what one would do then is you would you would visit them periodically work with them but certainly you wouldn't sort of take them out of society or or, or, or support criminal prosecution. And, and that lesser, less intense intervention has been found to be effective. It helps the woman certainly to reduce the amount of alcohol that they drink. Um, and and I, as I said, I would focus more on the upstream drivers that promote drinking in general amongst amongst women and, and, and men. And, you know, for example, the... Uh, 
Um, the availability of very cheap forms of alcohol, and we're considering in the Western Cape uh, something like minimum unit pricing, so you wouldn't be able to sell a standard drink for maybe less than six or eight eight rand. The pricing is a, an upstream strategy to, to reduce drinking. Marketing that glamorizes drinking, particularly is increasingly aimed at at young women or women who don't even drink, and also yeah, as a providing treatment for women who are dependent. So identifying them, doing screening at antenatal clinics, working with you know women who are childbearing age, because often people don't know they're pregnant and they continue drinking. So we need to get women into antenatal care earlier and then use other approaches, less, you know, less um, sort of criminalizing approaches, I think, to, to get people to cut down on their drink or to stop, particularly stop drinking when pregnant. I remember quite a long time ago when Patricia Lambert was at the Department of Health, uh, that is some time ago, and um, the Department of Health was thinking about making it illegal, and I think they're still thinking about making it illegal, to smoke in a car with children, in the car with you, and I said that's ridiculous. Um, obviously, it's not a good idea to smoke when there are young and tender lungs in that confined space with you. But how on earth are you going to enforce that? And her response to me was that there, there is a percentage of the population that will always obey the law. So people who smoke, when told that it is illegal to smoke in a car, a certain percentage of them will not smoke in a car because it is illegal. And so you will have achieved something simply by making it, Ill by making it illegal. You will have achieved a behavioral change in at least some of the smokers. Um, and I wonder if the same argument might be applied to this. Make it illegal to drink while pregnant and as long as you're doing other things as well simply by making it illegal you are making maybe even only a small dent but still a dent in the problem you know i think there's certainly some merit to that argument the same with if you raise the drinking age to 21 you know many people would stop you know drinking under 21 but a, a few, obviously many would, would still continue so you will have a, a you know have a positive effect um but, you know, you have to look at whether you want laws which are ignored by people and, and not seen as, as logical. Are we going to really do the policing of such such a law? Is or Have we reached that point? I, yeah, um, I don't think we have the evidence. And I, I'm a researcher, so we tend to rather promote um, strategies which yeah. have been shown to be effective elsewhere. So you know, we can speculate all we like about this, but you know, if I'm going with evidence-based strategies, I would put my money on, on other things and not criminalizing them. And certainly if you are going to, to take women, uh, uh, deal with women who are drinking while pregnant and they continue to do it, I would rather follow a civil route, which is the you know, a civil case where you... Um, you you know, with, as I said, with mental illness, where you detain them on the basis of being a danger to other people rather than, you know, a criminal record. Professor Charles Parry, thank you for your views. Director of the Mental Health, Alcohol, Substance Abuse and Tobacco Research Unit at the MRC.